dito sa fellowship natin, kung may wala namang bisita rin, I think everyone has attended MCBC. But uh, tanong ko lang po, sino yung first time umaten ng couples fellowship dito sa MCBC? Ayan, so we have a handful, no? Na ano, umaten. So ayan, maraming salamat po sa inyong pagpunta. And may God bless us sa ating pagsasama-sama uh, ngayong gabi. And uh, sana hindi natin madaliin itong oras ito Friday naman ngayon. I don't know kung may trabaho kay bukas. Pero let's make the most of our God-given time sa oras na ito. And let's sing. May mga hymnals naman tayo, I think. Yan, may hymnals. Let's uh, start by singing hymn number 53. Wala tayong pianist, pero... Uh, sa karamihan naman nandito, familiar tong song na ito. I'll just give uh, yung uh, tono na ating pwedeng uh, awitin. Hallelujah, praise Jehovah. Po, no? Page 53, 5-3 sa ating mga hymnals. As we come to the Lord, we recognize yung goodness niya sa bawat isa sa atin, uh, sa mga pagsasama. Uh, that He has joined us, both husband and wives, and nandito, and even yung goodness ng Diyos sa bawat isa sa atin na uh, maritay magtipon dito. Let's praise Him and con- to continue to trust in Him as expressed dito sa ating uh, awitin. So let's sing hymn number 53 about His goodness. Hallelujah, praise Jehovah. Ready? Sing. Hallelujah, praise Jehovah. O oh, my soul, Jehovah, praise. I will sing the glorious praises of my God through all my days. Put your confidence in princes, nor for help on men depend. Ye shall die to dust returning. Happy is the man that chooses Israel's God to be his aid. He is blessed whose hope of blessing on the Lord his God is stayed. Heaven and earth the Lord created. Seas and all that they contain. He delivers from oppression. Righteousness he will maintain. For he daily gives the hungry. The morning prisoner free. Graces those bow down with anguish to see. Well, Jehovah loves the righteous, and the stranger he befriends. Fatherless and widow. Judgment on the wicked sins. Hallelujah, praise Jehovah. Oh, my soul, Jehovah, praise. I will sing the glorious praises of my God through all my days. Over all the Lord forever, through all ages He is King. Tied to Him, thy God, O Zion, joyful hallelujah string. Amen. 
Tayo po yung manalangin na saglit. Salamat muli aming Diyos sa pagkakataon ito na binigay niyo sa amin. Tunay na pinupuri namin kayo as we have sung. You are indeed good sa amin and we have received and we have experienced yung goodness ninyo magpakailanman sa aming mga buhay at maging sa mga natatanggap namin sa araw-araw. Even this time, O Lord, this is by your goodness that we are gathered here together na makapag-fellowship and most of all, makipag-commune sa inyo sa inyong salita. Help us as we have yung study na aming pagtutunan ngayon. Truly, we recognize and we submit to you that uh, you are our help. You are Uh, our sufficiency sa mga bagay na ito. And especially as couples, as husband and wives na nandito ngayon, O oh Lord, nagtitiwala kami sa inyong biyaya na kami patuloy ninyong pagbuklo din, pagsamahin, at maging nga aming mga anak sa mga gabing ito ay uh, tulungan nyo kami sa aming paksa na pag-aaralan. Kaya sana ay bumaba ang inyong presensya sa aming kalagitnaan. Pagpalaan nyo po ito sa ngala ni Jesus. Amen. Ayan po tayo magsiupo. And para sa benefit ng mga first time namin nakasama dito, uh, yung ginagawa namin, mga elders dito yung sa, sa Couples Fellowship for the past meetings, ang ginagawa po ay we, we, we go through or we have gone through itong uh, series na dinatalakay namin actually sa premarital counseling. No? And I think, Pastor Roli, merong ilang sessions na? Buo, no? So, parang eight. Oh, parang eight sessions. So, we have gone through eight sessions. O pang walo ito or pang pito ng session na yon. na uh, Actually, ginagamit namin para dun sa mga uh, bago ikasal, yung counseling sessions na yan. And uh, magmula sa communication, sa in-laws, finances. Ayan, natalakay natin dito. And this time, ay hindi natin din maiwasan kasi tinatalakay din namin ito dun sa mga ikakasal in preparation. Pero yung tinatalakay namin medyo maiksi lang actually, parang overview lang. Ito, eh, mas medyo extensive but hindi siya exhaustive. No? At yun yung uh, ating pag-aaralan ngayong gabing ito. And first of all, nice kong sabihin sa inyo na I do not claim uh, uh, to be an expert sa larangan na ito. And I don't Uh, I am not even sufficient sa bagay na ito. But uh, in all these things, we know yung sufficiency natin, especially sa mga bagay patungkol sa buhay, ay ang Diyos mismo, yung salita ng Diyos. At uh, yun yung ating pagkakatiwalaan. At uh, yung ating paksa kasi pag-aaralan ngayong gabi ay patungkol sa children or child rearing. Or pwede natin tawagin na sa whole parenting. No? As parenting. And uh, uh, itong paksa ay eh, medyo malawak. Kaya ang uh, nais kong gawin dito is, kumbaga, he, yung parenting kasi malawak, no? Uh, may mga stages, mga sa maliliit, sa mga teenage, and even sa mga mas uh, adults or even yung mga empty nesters sa mga parents. And I think may diversity. Yung diversity na yun, meron dito ngayon eh. Uh, meron dun sa mga infancy. Uh, may, may infants. May dalawang baby rito. Meron may mga toddlers. And I think may mga teenagers. At merong mga anong tawag sa sunod ng teenagers? Ayoko tawag, ayoko tawag yung adolescent eh. Uh, singles? Kung <laughs> anong tawag doon? But nonetheless, in yung, yung, yung scope noon. But by the way, all of us are children of our parents. So dapat makaka-relate tayo. Anyway, so yan ating paksa about parenting and about children. But before that, nice kong bigay itong uh, uh, statement na binigay ni na, sa isang book mula kay Dog Wilson. By the way, yung sources ko nito, uh, uh, Samut Sari na rin, isa si Dog Wilson sa kanyang book na Standing on the Promises. Uh, hinayon tulad niya no sa isang garden yung uh, pamamahay and sabi nga diyan sabi niya diyan in order uh, to have a garden full of weeds it is not necessary to do anything so wala kang kailangan gawin kung gusto mo yung garden mo ay puro uh, ligaw na damo wala kang kailangan gawin no just leave it as is wag kang magtrabaho wag mong pansinin and it will grow uh, weeds really and similarly in order to have a home full of grief Uh, is yan. It is not necessary to do anything either. So, ganun din. Kung yung pamamahay mo, ihalin tulad natin dun sa garden na yun, eh, 
puro grief, puro sakit sa puso, sakit sa ulo, if hindi natin papansin, hindi natin papangalagaan ang ating pamamahay. Now, here's a longer statement. No? Medyo, hindi ko lang bakit maliit yung projection. Pero it is moral idiocy to leave children alone in order to let them learn alone or make decisions for themselves. Uh, dangerous. In fact, it's uh, morally ignorant daw. May kakulangan. Uh, morally, kung ganun yung pag-iisip natin, na iwan natin yung mga kabataan to themselves so that they can learn by themselves or alone. The fact that they are left alone by their parents at home does not mean they will be left alone. By nature, children are malleable or pliable. They will either be shaped lawfully by those commands by God to perform the, the task or they will be shaped unlawfully by outsider or by an outsider. But as children, they will be shaped. So kahit anong paraan, children will be shaped. Ang question lang is, by whom? Or by what? Okay? So hindi question na matututo mga bata. Matututo yan. The question is, through whom? At kung ano yung matututunan nila. And uh, for tonight, una, nais kong bigay sa atin, uh, fundamental truths concerning children. Fundamental truths concerning children. And we have to know and we have to understand that the procreative function or faculties natin bilang mag-asawa, babae at lalaki, are stewardship from God. Pinagkatiwala ito ng Diyos sa atin. Uh, it's not merely biological na ganito ang pangyayari, but in fact, it is that reflective. Sa atin, no, bilang nilikha ng Diyos, created in His image, one way na nire-reflect natin yung pagiging, yung, yung image ng Diyos is through the procreative capacity. As God created everything, we who are created in His image, sa ganitong bagay nakikita yung creative capacity in procreation even. That's why pag binasa natin yung Genesis, ang mga sinasabi doon according to His likeness. Adam begat this and that according to His likeness. And uh, we reflect yung procreative, yung creative capacity ng Diyos bilang image bearers ng Diyos. And uh, as parents, ganun ang nangyayari sa atin. There is intimacy involved in it wherein a married man and woman become one flesh in sexual union as means to effect conception. Now, may intimacy involved. Pag kinag-usapan natin bata, merong bata, there was intimacy involved sa isang babae at isang lalaki. And even sa bagay na yun, ang dami natin, ang lawak ng, ng, ng saklaw ng pag-uusap na yan. In fact, uh, especially human sexuality. That's why it's really, literally, nonsense. It's, it's illogical even na ang uh, mag-proceed yung same-sex marriage, same-sex couple, same-sex union. Because it defies it, uh, the very nature of such uh, union ng uh, pagsasama. Itong function ito hindi mangyayari. No? Uh, kung may perversion na nangyayari sa dalawang tao. And sadly, or I mean, uh, aside from intimacy involved sa pag-aasawa, sa procreation ng mga anak, ay uh, merong kalungkutan din. As God designed it to be holy and blessed, which it is, yung reality is yung fall sa kasalanan by Adam and Eve, permeate or permeated this intimate and blessed design of God even hanggang ngayon. No? Uh, that's why it results to sexual perversions and sexual immoralities na rampant sa ating paligid. Uh, though uh, we see that, that sad reality, nevertheless, the fact remains that children are a blessing and a gift from God. Galing po sa Diyos yan. They are a gift from God. And uh, that's why I would shy away sa term then na, uh, you know, pag nariging term, nariging term most likely na illegitimate child. Tama? No? I mean, uh, we understand kung ibig sabihin nun, paano nangyayari, children born out of wedlock and all that. that. Those are sad situations, sad cases na maaring reality sa ilan sa atin o kilala natin. But it doesn't remove the fact that every child is indeed a blessing and a gift 
from God. And uh, yun yung sinasabi sa Psalm 127 verse 3 to 5 and 123, 28 verse 3. If you could look at that sa inyong mga time. Now, taken from Pastor Al Martin, no, he gives us four reasons dito sa bagay na that children are a blessing and a gift from God. Una-una, children are tangible and irreversible witnesses that the two have become one. Okay? Irreversible and tangible. Kitang-kita mo. No? Na ayan, ayun yung pruweba that two flesh became one in sexual union. There's that intimacy involved and here's the tangible proof and an irreversible proof. Kaya nga kahit sabihin ng isang magulang na tinatakwil kita bilang anak, you can't do that. You can say it na ganun, but it's irreversible. Anak mo pa rin yung kahit anong mangyari. Okay? Uh, isa pa. Children are the occasion of your own growth in grace. Means of grace ang mga anak. Sa mga magulang. In patience and even self-sacrifice. No? So that's why they are a blessing and they are a gift from God. And children are the means of much or the source of much delight. If we look at Proverbs, paulit-ulit sinasabi doon ng isang wise na son brings delight sa kanyang magulang. No? And we will deal with the other side, the unwise son later. And sa pa, children are the hope of succeeding generation, especially sa church, na kung saan pag pinagpapala ng Diyos, ang isang magulang, isang family, na merong nagmumold na influence, especially ng, ng parents, eh, kadalasan, ay, uh, ito yung nagiging means, parang isang church ay lumalago. Uh, sa, sa loob mismo ng iglesia and we are thankful sa Lord sa nangyayari din sa ating kalagitnaan yung mga conversion, mga kaligtasan ng mga second generation ng mga uh, mga anak natin no? and we continue to pray for that but they are the hope of the succeeding generation and uh, the church, this church is what? 30 30 ilang years na to? iba-iba no? kahit yung pastor Ha? 33? Tama, 33? O, oh, 87, no? 33 years. And uh, yung mga pioneer na nag-start dito or even yung mga nasa start ng pag-start ng church na to, I mean, you know, the reality is we will not live for 100 years. No? And uh, we do not know when the Lord will come again. But the reality is, uh, yung next generation, the Lord is adding sa ating kalagitnaan. And that's why it's a source of joy and even hope sa mga succeeding generations sa magpatuloy ang ilaw dito sa MCBC. And that's why we're thankful for the Lord sa bagay na yan. And uh, here's a quote from uh, uh, Robert Dabney. The instrumentalities of the family are chosen and ordained of God as the most efficient of all means of grace. More truly and efficaciously, efficaciously, means of saving grace than all the other ordinances of the church. Yes, it's true na ang church, yung gawain dito, uh, yung preaching, yung teaching, ministering ng salita ng Diyos, Lord's Supper, ordinances, are means of grace. Even church discipline, means of grace para sa kaligtasan, even sa growth ng mga manampalataya. But when you go home, when we go home sa ating mga anak, no, we are exposed sa ating mga anak day in, day out. And the instrumentality of the family is a chosen and ordained means of God as the most efficient. Kung tutuusin talaga, pag-iisipan natin. Because doon nangyayari yung katunayan ng mga pag-uusap na hindi galing sa pulpito lang. No? It's seen sa life ng uh, mga kabataan at ng magulang. So, let's take this to heart, yung responsibility ng parenting or child rearing. Now, in yung foundation or fundamental truths concerning children, and there would be more na gusto ko sanang include, but for the sake of time, nilimit natin doon. Now, it's, let's look at the responsibilities or the responsibilities and duties involved. Now, here's Doug Wilson uh, commenting on Dabney sa essay niya, no? in fact, preaching niya. Ang sabi ni Wilson dun sa kanya, Under God's providence, when a man and a woman have a child, they have kindled a spark that can never be put out. That child, blessed man yan or cursed, will exist forever and ever. I mean, when I read and studied this, may napaisip ako actually. 
Oh, the fact na meron kang anak, yes, it's a blessing, but we have to remember that this is a soul that will continue to exist and live until eternity, whether in the torments and judgment of hell or in the blessing in the presence of God for all eternity. Nonetheless, when a couple, when a husband and wife has joined together at merong fruit sa kanilang pasasama, sa mga supling, that spark can never be put out. Just think about that and let that sink in sa ating mga isipan para sa bagay na yan. Now, as much as indeed na yung mga kabataan ay blessing galing sa Lord, uh, it is also a stewardship, just like na mention kanina, of both parents because we will give an account sa Lord. We will give an account. Parents, you will stand before God and answer to God para sa inyong mga anak. Hindi para sa mga anak ng kapitbahay nyo, or kapatid nyo, or dito sa church. You will answer to God for your own children, for our own children. Now, here are uh, another uh, uh, continuation of sinabi, no? No peaceful oblivion awaits poorly, poorly reared children. And uh, further, God has made the world in such a way that parents have a tremendous influence over the direction of their children, uh, their, their children take either for good or evil. And we have a big responsibility as parents to our children. Now, here are some parental responsibility assumptions. Unang-una, in parenting, we should, it is assumed, especially for believers, at alam natin that the Bible is sufficient. Sufficiente po ang salita ng Diyos uh, when it comes to the duty of rearing our children or raising our children. Though oftentimes, it will be confusing. Nakakalito, nakakapagod, and it leaves the parents with many questions. Bakit ganito? Bakit ganyan? But we have to remember that all the questions that need to be answered can be answered by the Bible. Take note the need. No? Yung kailangan na kailangan talagang masagot sa mga katanungan, eh, merong sagot ang Biblia. Ang sagot ay nasa Biblia po. Okay? Not all the questions that we can raise up ay pwedeng magkaroon, hanapin natin sa Bible ang sagot. Bakit? Ganito yung uh, kulay ng anak ko. <laughs> Hindi po. Uh, the, the important questions that need to be answered can and is answered by the Bible. That's why the Bible is sufficient para sa ating pagpapalaki, pag raise ng ating mga anak. Pangalawa, discipline is no substitute for regeneration. Okay? Discipline is no substitute for regeneration. Discipline comes both in sa formative or instruction, development, constructive, and even punitive, yung corrective action. Hindi lang yun puro palo. Hindi merong informative din, merong uh, instructional, merong guide. But at the same time, meron ding punitive na case yung sa discipline. Much like sa church discipline. No? Now, strict discipline may drive away or channel that evil or foolishness from the child to produce a socially likable and acceptable child. No? Tinapalo, tinidiscipline, kinokorek. And uh, it may produce a child that is socially acceptable and likable. Ay, bait ng anak mo talaga. Do we want that? Of course. Why not? But that's not the goal, really. That's not the bottom line. Godly and strict discipline must not only aim for well-behaved kids. The Christian parent must always take into account the reality of sin, rebellion, and God's holiness that leads to the gospel. That's what we have to consider always sa, sa, sa discipline na ating mga anak. Hindi siya substitute. Hindi lang natin i-aim na uh, basta maging uh, ma- ma-train ko yung anak ko in such a manner na uh, hindi ako mapapahiya sa mga sa magulang ko, sa office mates ko, sa church or what. Hindi yun yung aim natin dapat. No? We don't want just well-mannered, well-behaved kids in society or in culture. We want our we want to rescue our children. It's a rescue mission really. A rescue from sin, from his sin, her sin, and from the wrath of God. That's why the gospel is essential. Discipline is no substitute for regeneration. But discipline is often the means then and the road 
na kung saan yung gospel ay mas maliwanag na napapahayag. No? Ito yung nagiging daan nang sa ganun yung gospel ay napapahayag sa kanila. Pangatlo, the husband has the final responsibility for child rearing. Hmm. The husband has the final responsibility for child rearing or child raising, discipline, and parenting. Though this is a shared responsibility yung parenting, the final responsibility for the child in raising of the child is the fathers. Buksan natin yung Bibles natin sa Ephesians chapter 3, verse 4. Yung Bibles, kalimutan ko, hindi ko pala pwedeng galawin yung Bibles. Pwede pong pakibasa Ephesians 3, verse 4, and yung isa, Colossians 3, 21. Medyo similar, no? Colossians, uh, Ephesians 3, 4, and Colossians 3, 21. Pakibasa po, meron ba din magbasa? Prisco. Hindi, okay lang. Meron ba pwede magbasa? <laughs> Yun na lang. Ephesians 3 verse 4, tsaka isa, Colossians 3.21. Teka, parang mali nga. 6.4 to, hindi 3.4. Sorry. Colossians 3.21. Okay, thank you. And uh, those are just some of the verses na kung saan merong pagpuntiriya talaga sa mga fathers. No? And uh, pag merong spinesify sa scriptures na binanggit na fathers na ganyan, eh, may ibig sabihin yun. Okay? Uh, and that Uh, even in Hebrews 12.9 and Proverbs 3.12, na kung saan, sa Proverbs 3 especially, na yung discipline ng ama, ng Diyos, is likened to that of a father's discipline sa child. Uh, we see you know, the world will cry out, say, that's patriarchy. No? Palaging sinasabing puro lalaki, puro tatay. Paano na yung mga babae? And uh, Uh, that's another issue. Hindi natin kailangan mapag-usapan. But the father has a final responsibility for this. The husband must lead his wife in child raising. He must not merely react to or react with her. He must not blame her and not be led by her as this is what headship necessarily involves. Pangunguna. The husband is the leader of the home. Okay? And that's why the husband has the final responsibility. Bagaman, there would be times that talagang nade-delegate yung authority na yon sa mothers, especially at home, with practical sense. Dahil kung ang father ay nag-work, somebody has to take care of the kids. But that doesn't mean na ang tatay ay magtatamad sa pagdidisiplina. Ay, basta ikaw na bahala dyan. No. No. The father has full accountability and is a final responsibility for child rearing. Pang-apat, young children are not equipped for independence. Now, grown children are to be fully independent. Yung mga malalaki na ay uh, magiging independent. Uh, in fact, yun yung direction talaga ng mga bata. But young children, no, older children at home are to be Quasi or semi-independent as parents prepare them for the time they leave home. And parents, I hope, ganito yung mindset natin. Ayon natin itago lang sila na magiging overprotective tayo, na magkakadal-kadal lang tayo. Basta magkakasama tayo palagi, okay na yun. No, that's not God's mandate. Hindi yan yung direction ng isang magulang at ng isang anak. We want to prepare them for life outside the home. But at the same time, may balance eh. As long as they're at home, when they are very young pa, they cannot be independent. They should not be left to themselves. But kung medyo matanda na yung mga bata, may katandaan na, they are to be given such responsibility din. That's why semi-independent. Now, young children, though, uh, though, are dependent. Mga bata, talagang dependent. At we treat them as such. 
and we should not reverse the order. Christian parents are to be involved. Watching children grow up to maturity is not a spectator sport. Hindi tayo parang nasa isang kolosyum nagsichir lang tayo, sige, go, go! No, you are to be involved. You have to divest your life sa mga kabataan, sa anak natin, as we want them to grow older. We want to be there for them. Okay? Any question so far? Kasi mga bata pa lang to. Ito talaga, mga hanggang dito, talagang maliliit na bata. And I see merong, merong mga nganak pa lang, or dwelling, at merong nanganak na. na. Baby pa rin. Yung mga daladala. At merong mga toddlers na dito sa kabilang room. Sabi sa inyo, diverse tayo. Eh, no? May segment. Magkahiwala yung dalawa. May buntis. Merong mga baby. May mga toddlers. May teenager ba doon? May teens? Wala pang teens, no? Ah, meron. May teens, no? And then, uh, meron din naman mga semi-adults. Tulad ni Shael. Nandiyan dyan, no? <laughs> so, any questions po dito? Uh, with regards sa mga kabataan. We just discussed so far yung responsibilities ng uh, child raising. So, when say child, uh, nandun pa sa stage na yun. May ma- mga bata pa talaga. Before we go on, dito sa susunod natin, which is yung mga yung mga semi independent kung tawagin natin. So children sa mga maliliit na bata. So I hope maging clear to no sa atin yung guidelines na yan, especially doon sa mga upcoming uh, parents. And uh, that's a big responsibility sa bawat isa sa atin and sa inyo. Okay? Wala ang question or mamaya baka may discussion, baka may maiisip kayo. Nandiyan naman yung tatlo pang pastor na tutulong. Now, we go to the third point, which is, and when they are older. older, Okay? Let's talk about teenagers. Okay, teenagers. Number one, we have to deal with teaching them. Teaching teenagers. Hindi tayo magpapaligoy-ligoy pa. Uh, Proverbs 1, verse 7 to 9. No? Uh, that's a key text na pwede nating meditate upon. Who knows what's what's Proverbs 1:7 is? Proverbs 1:7. Okay? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge or wisdom. And san magsisimula yung understanding, awareness of that fear or knowledge of God? Sa school? No, sa bahay. Sa parents mismo. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4 to 9, no? uh, mark that lang sa inyong mga uh, Bible. As we go there, mamaya, it's a good place and a reminder for, and a guide for us. Let me just read this. The Bible teaches that a child's primary instruction is not assigned to the other uh, ordained entities na nilikha ng Diyos, which is what? Institutions. Ha? Huh? Institution ba yan? Two other institutions na itinilaga ng Diyos. Hindi, bukod nga dun eh. Government and church. No? Kaya malaking usapin din yung school eh. Government and church instituted by God. Tama? And nowhere sa scripture sa may kita natin that God designated or delegated instruction ng mga kabataan sa government or sa church. No, there are cases na kumbaga sa church natuturuan sila pero hindi yun yung primary na uh, lugar at puwang as God has designed it. It is to the family, it is to the parents, the task belongs to the parents of teaching primary instructions sa mga kabataan. Okay? I hope that is clear sa bawat isa atin. This task is, in a sense, tricky on two points. Number one, they have a greater need for instruction that they have never had before. Talking about teenagers. No? they have a greater need for instruction that they have ever had before. Kasi nung malilit pa sila, when they were younger, 
uh, pinabalansi din natin yung mga instructions na hanggang saan lang. Pero as they grow older, mas dumadami, in fact, yung instructions. I forgot sino yung gumawa ng demographics na yun, no? Uh, kung si Ted Tripp yun, na ang uh, punitive discipline, sabi natin ito yung age ng bata, na habang uh, gawa tayo ng graph, kunwari, ito yung uh, start ng zero, patanda, yung age ng bata. Ito yung degree ng uh, uh, instruction. Sa so stage na yun, habang mas malit pa yung mga bata, yung degree ng uh, punitive or yung uh, discipline, eh, mas, mas less yung talk at mas mataas yung uh, punitive na discipline. No? Pero as the child grows older, ideally, dapat bumababa ito. At instruction, no maliit pa, hindi ganun kadami, pero habang tumatanda ay lumalak, lumala, lumalaki, dumadami yung instruction. Yun ang goal natin. No? Hindi yung 17 years old, nagahabulan pa kayo sa mall dahil ayaw niya mag-behave o dahil hindi niya nakuha yung gusto niya. At halika, papaluin kita. I mean, nangyayari yun. No? Uh, ayaw natin, gusto natin instruction na kung saan ang mga kabataan ay uh, napapalaki ng tama in accordance to the will of God. Now, pangalawa, kaya sinabi niyang tricky, they assert that they have less need for instructions that they ever had. Sa tingin nila, I don't need that anymore. I'm already old now. Okay? Mas matanda na ako. Eh. Marami na akong alam ngayon. So I don't need more instruction. So tigilan nyo na ako. Alam ko na yan. Okay? Facebook lang ang katapat niyan. <laughs> okay? That's why sabi nung, nung auto, it's may trickiness sa bagay yan. But nonetheless, it should be the case na parents are given the primary task for instructions. They should understand that the radical nature of depravity of sin at the same time thoroughly understand the remedy set before them in the gospel. Okay? Teenagers. Again, we're talking about teenagers na. Palagi dapat na-emphasize sa kanila yung radical depravity nila in sin. At the same time, being pointed to their hope which is in the gospel. Balikan to natin. Deuteronomy 6 verse 4 to 9 it's a good re reminder and guide for teaching teenagers. Uh, in this, the best teaching time seems to be found in talks. Kaya pag binasa natin kasi Deuteronomy 6, 4, uh, magsimula sa 4, uh, about who God is, primarily, binigay sa mga hudyo, but we can take from that, yung instruction na yan. You shall teach them diligently to your children, to your sons. What? Yung sinabi sa 4. Behold, O Israel, hear, O Israel, Lashima, hear, O Israel, the Lord, her God is one. And all that. So instruction about God should be in the case na kung saan it is found in talks. So sa mga kabataan, sa mga teenager, teenagers, the best teaching time seems to be found in talks. Pag-uusap. Okay? So parents, kayo na may mga teenagers, how often do you talk? to your children, to your teenagers about God? Okay? That's a good question. Now, this means that teenagers should be getting information from their parents on a constant basis. Constant. Palagi. And that's why parents should be there. At least one. Sa kanila should be there para sa kanila mga anak. Though times of discipline can generate or make a way for this, but a better time is when they are not in trouble over something. Regular, everyday talk. Hindi lang nag-uusap dahil nagkaroon ng pagpapalo or nagkaroon ng discipline or nagkaroon ng confrontation. Kaya nasasabi yung patungkol sa Diyos. I mean, that's good and right, pero mas maganda rin na hindi sa context ng discipline. Kundi sa context ng lahat ng bagay, na magkasama kayo. Kaya nga, constant na magkasama. Parents, remember, let us remember, we only have a certain time allotted sa atin na makakasama natin yung mga anak natin. That's it. And there's no turning back sa bagay na yan. Hindi natin mauungkat pabalik yan. What God has given us is that stewardship para sa ating mga anak. What God, ay mali pala. Okay? We must cherish it. Now, here's another point, no? When it comes to teaching our teenagers, we have to be certain, kasi ito, 
medyo nag medyo nagkukos talaga ito ng problema minsan pag hindi nagiging maayos. Are we talking about God's rule or house rule? Okay, what does that mean? How, God's rule or house rule? We must make sure that there's distinction between God's commands, biblical law, and house rules. Nasusundan? Okay? Explicit commands sa scriptures, sa Diyo, ng Diyos, such as lying, should not be confused with jumping on the bed or coming home late. Okay? So therefore, ang, ang, ang punitive, yung discipline dyan sa bagay na yan, pag yan ay na overstep, ay hindi dapat pareho yung treatment. Like for example, late umuwi, o hindi nagpaalam. Ang treatment natin is para siyang uh, direct disobedience sa, sa, sa Diyos. Like for example din, sa bahay, gawin nating mas simple, na nagtakbuhan sa bahay, na may in-instruct ka na dapat hindi kayo nagtatakbuhan sa bahay. And then yung treatment mo is as if talagang ibubuhos ng Diyos yung kanyang puot sa kanila dahil nagtakbuhan sila sa bahay. Okay? House rules and God's explicit rules. Huwag tayo makonfuse doon. This is critical as the usual conflict would arise later on, hindi man sa ngayon sa mga kabataan, but especially sa teenagers, it would usually arise and be seen when they look at other household and see different house rules. Bakit sila pwede? Ba't sa amin hindi? Ba't stricto yung mami namin sa, sa kanila hindi? Those are house rules. We have to make sure that it's house rule. Bakit sa kanila pwede magsinungaling sa amin hindi? Ay, hindi house rule yun. Ba't sa kanila pwede magmura ng ganyan? Hindi sila sinasaway. Sa atin, napamura lang ang saglit. Pinalo agad ako ni nanay at ni tatay. Ay, hindi po house rule yun. That's God's rule. Okay? That's a moral rule or law. Eh, wag natin i-confuse daw yung bagay na yun kasi it would bring about many problems later on. What God wants and what we should want as well is biblical morality and not just merely moralism. Understand? Ang gusto natin, ang gusto ng Diyos is biblical morality at hindi lang moralism. Ibig sabihin ng moralism is parang legalism. Okay? Parang legalism, parang sa Pharisee, Pharisaic lang. They must know, uh, similar to sa traditions ng mga tao, na nire-replace yung utos ng Diyos. And sinasabi natin na parang ito, utos to ng Diyos. When in fact, it's just like house rules. Okay? But don't, don't be confused, don't get me wrong then. Now, when we make a house rule, ang response ng mga bata dapat, it's that it should be what? Obedience dapat. It should be obeyed. And to disobey that means disobedience sa parents and disobedience to God, basically. But not entirely dun sa bagay na kanilang dinisobey. Hindi yun yung moral factor dun. Yung morality dun sa ginawa is dinisobey mo yung house rule natin. Okay? And uh, kaya nga hindi tayo magiging legalistic sa paranayin. They must know what the laws are for and not merely obey and participate in it moralistically or legally. Kaya nga, kung tayo gumagawa ng rules sa bahay, it's important na sinasabi natin bakit may rule na ganyan. Bakit house rule natin ito. And ideally, dapat tutungo rin yun, hindi lang dahil gusto lang ni mommy and ni daddy. Hindi lang dahil para hindi mapahiya si mommy at si daddy. Ideally, meron pa rin moral implication yung bagay na yun. Correct? Meron pa rin dapat patutunguhan patungkol sa Diyos. Okay? Although it's not explicit, but then there are house rules. Okay? May maisip ba kayong mga house rules na minsan magkakaiba sa pamamahay? Ha? Ano, alas ng tulog, okay? Hindi mo malaking issue ba yan pag ano? Ba't kayo hanggang alas 12 kami hanggang alas sa isla? <laughs> Marami actually, no? Uh, ano bang medyo nagkakaroon ng source ng... Uh, inggitan at uh, comparison minsan. Meron ba? Bakit sila pwedeng gumamit ng tablet? Gadgets. Bakit kami hindi pwede? Bakit sila pwedeng manood ng TV? Kami hindi pwede. Unang-una nakulat tayong TV. <laughs> Mare, ganun, di ba? But, house rule. Mare, pag sinabing gadget, ganito, limited time. Bakit sa kanil limited time? We have to explain. No? 
Na pero pag na-break yon, hindi dahil makasalanan yung gadget, pero dahil meron binigay na rule si mommy and daddy at yun ay dinisobey mo. Okay, doon manggagaling yung context natin ng discipline if ever. So, kailangan maging clear din tayo sa house rules at hindi lang maging legalistic. Now, areas of application uh, para sa bagay na yan, no? sa work. We're talking about teenagers pa rin, no? Work. Okay? Trabaho. Now, sinabi ko kanina, we want to raise our children in a way that we are preparing them for the life ahead. Kaya nga, yung concept at principle pa rin ng work, hindi natin iaasa yan sa school. Hindi natin iaasa lang yan. Sa bahay pa lang dapat natuturuan na ng concept at principle ng work. Anak, Malaki-laki ka na, marunong ka ng lakad, nakakaintindi ka na, do some work. And here, bibigyan ka namin. Commensurate na work naman. Hindi bibigyan mo yung 4-year-old na trabaho na pang 20 years old. Of course not. Now, bigyan mo na mga light, mga chores, mga simpleng pagpulot ng papel na huwag magkalat, tumulong sa bahay, magtiklop ng damit. No? So, work. Preparation at home with duties and chores. Yung measurement of later success is often seen in the fruit of instruction given at home with regards to this aspect. Kaya nga ito, for example, itong house rules, pinag-uusapan pa rin natin. Magkakaiba-iba yung families, magkakaiba-iba yung presentation sa mga anak nila, how they view work. Okay? Magkakaiba-iba yan. Usually, makikita mo minsan sa output, sa attitude, when it comes sa work. If you put in laziness sa inyong mga anak, expect nyo Ang attitude din yan, when it comes, when there comes work, is most likely inclined doon sa pagiging lazy. Okay? So, but nonetheless, it's different in every household na hindi natin uh, magkakaiba-iba rin tayo. Now, not just in work, but entertainment standards. Nasabi ko kanina, um, you know, sa gadgets, sa TV. But one important aspect na kailangan nating maging maingat din, as we want entertainment, we want hindi natin sinasabing makasalanan na mag-delight o mag-participate sa entertainment to entertain ourselves. Pero ano yung, paano magiging moral? Anong moral aspect na entertainment? Ano ba yung pinapanood? Ano ba yung ini-indulge? Ano ba yung sinasagap ng mga kabataan? Do we just let them okay, entertain themselves? And by the way, yung entertainment comes, especially for younger kids and teenagers, you know, out of boredom. Dati, nung mga teenagers kayo, tayo, ano yung mga pinag, pinaglalaloran natin, wala pa namang gadgets. Medyo mahaba pa yung attention span natin noon, ninyo, especially rin. No, yung mga mas nakakatanda. And uh, there are things. Wala tayong laruan. Ang gagawin natin, gumawa tayo ng laruan. Okay? O yan, may lata ng sardinas, may plastic ng grocery bag. Gawin natin kite. So by the time you already played, you've already consumed time. E ngayon, <laughs> Ay, pahinga yung cellphone. <laughs> pahinga nung tablet ko. Ko. Okay? Uh, so, iba-iba. No? Entertainment standards. What we let our children indulge in. But the principle is, what God requires is what we feed them. Through entertainment. Yung morality doon. Mag-ingat tayo. Okay? Ito, controversial. Dress and appearance standards. That's our appearance standard. Uh, Will, Wilson, si Douglas Wilson sabi niya, Wilson notes that the Bible has no explicit word on cultural variations. Cultural variations. But it has many things to say about cultural deterioration. Okay? Now, kung gusto niyo maging cultural, yung cultural vari- viola- var- variations, you go back, read sa Old Testament, sa tingin niyo pwede pa nating apply ngayon yun. Hindi pwedeng maghalo yung yung fabric, hindi pwedeng polyester, hindi pwedeng cotton. Kung cotton, cotton. Ba. Eh may kitang si damit ngayon, 50% cotton, 30% polyester and all that. Sa kanila noon, bawal. Okay? May mga ganung rules and law. But again, sabi niya walang explicit sa cultural variants, but there are many things to say about cultural deterioration, meaning yung morals ng culture. On this issue of dress, the success is measured by the teen's resistance to peer tyranny or pressure and failure in the enslavement to such and other related pressures. Yung success daw 
na makikita natin sa isang teenager na when it comes to sa appearance, sa pananamit, is really uh, sa kanyang resistance sa peer or pressure. O nagiging enslaved ba siya rito sa appearance niya for the, for the applause, for the acceptance of peers. And if we're instructing our children enough, no, again, iba-ibang pamamahay. Baka makita nyo, bakit si ganito pwedeng ganyan. Now, in the church context, uh, pagpasok natin dito sa church, meron tayong mga guidelines, especially for members. Now, when we talk about the, the, the uh, modesty, pinag-usapan natin kay Pastor Clyde. That. But overall, when we talk about our children, there is that distinction dapat that there is you know, house rule and God's rule. I'm not gonna go extensive dito sa bagay na ito. No, pero that's one area of consideration na may kita natin. Not just in appearances or dress standards, friendship. Friendship ng mga kabataan, mga anak natin. 1 Corinthians 15.33, you know, um, yung text na yan. Uh, as much as we can, uh, sabi nga ni Wilson sa bahay niya, uh, sa, sa mga anak niya, is uh, kung, kung, kung yung taong to hindi natin papasukin sa bahay natin, ganong klase yung attitude, ganitong klase why make friends with them? No? Just an analogy na gusto niya. So mag-ingat, as parents then we want to be careful kung paano natin tuturuan yung mga anak natin on who, how they would choose their friends. Okay? And again, every household would have perhaps varying, differing cases or opinions about that. But, in all this na binanggit yan, merong standard sa salita ng Diyos na dapat nating panghawakan. Although there would be some, like house rules, na binanggit dyan, eh, baka magkaiba. At hindi natin masasabing, ito'y dapat ganyan, para sa kanila o para sa atin. They must know what the laws are, they must know yung mga bagay na ito. The point here is, the point is, if the specifics ng mga house rules cannot be backed up by uh, biblically, the parents should not only uh, treat them or apply them in such a way that it, it is as if their child were caught in some act of rebellious sin. And of course, sinabi ko kanina, to directly disobey the household rules are direct disobedience to the parents and ultimately toward God. Ephesians 6, 1. And nevertheless, meron distinction that should be made and be maintained. Okay? Now, ito, pang-apat, pangalawa dun sa when they're older. And I, I think this would go on after ng mga teams. Recovering lost grounds. Many parents begin to learn about the basics of biblical child rearing after their kids are already old. That's a fact, no? Uh, that's a sad fact and reality. And bad habits are already firmly established. As sad as it may seem, no? But, uh, sabi dito, with regard to an, uh, by the way, sabi, with regards to an undisciplined uh, teenager, God may still use you to rescue whatever is left to be rescued. Okay? Sadly, in some, there may be very little to be rescued, while on others, thankfully, many can still be done. Uh, that's just the reality ng uh, uh, pamumuhay. At uh, ganyan ang providence nangyari. But we have to watch out, parents, for, with regards to this, the sin of omission. Na kung saan, parents become indulgent to cover up or to cover for the child over and over and over again. Okay? Pinagtatakpan na lang. Okay? That's, that's omission. This is difficult to learn for many parents as they are easily maneuvered into feeling guilty by a manipulative teenager. Eh, ano eh, ah, sinasabi niya sa amin, ganito, parang hindi, na, hindi ko kayang i-correct na dahil, ano eh, parang, parang tama yung sinasabi niya eh. Be careful, be careful uh, on, on that. Now, there's also a sin of commission, is seen when the parent is unable to tell the teenager to do something like simple house rules without getting into a major confrontation over it. Kailangan mag-away. Kailangan pag-awayan. Kailangan 
awayin bago mapasunod. Okay, kailangan ng uh, uh, gera muna. So we have to watch out and be careful about this. And still, we're talking about recovering lost ground. Here's an admonition. Pick your battles carefully. We will have problems with this. And parents will have problems with this because we issue commands frequently but thoughtlessly. Utos tayo ng utos, pero hindi natin pinag-iisipan talaga yung mga utos natin. No? It's just that we, do, we want to get things done. And that's it. And children will most likely be confused and hate it for, hate us for that. And uh, you must pick your battles carefully. Kung ano yung mga kailangan natin pag-usapan, mga utos na yan, ano ba talagang kailangan na pag-usapan? Yung disobedience na yan, ano ba to? But, also, once we have chosen our battles carefully, it is important that we win as parents. If we have lost a great amount of ground, we will never recover it by losing more grounds. One important area to reestablish is the respect that they should have for us. Now, again, talking about teenagers and older, na kung saan, you're already trying to recover lost grounds dahil Sabi mo na, na, you have neglected the earlier years ng discipline na dapat, as we have seen in scriptures. And you want to recover it. Recovering lost grounds, you have to choose them carefully. And once we have chosen it, uh, we have to establish first yung respect that they should have. Yung respeto ng mga bata sa magulang. This is not to be done through wavering uncertainty or hesitation. That's one main thing. No? Yung authority figure sa bahay. They, children, should learn authority, the concept of authority first sa bahay. And kung ang parents simula pa lang, hindi binigay sa batang yun. And all they have is disrespect sa authority. They will carry it outside the homes, wherever they go. Okay? They will have no restraint in a sense. When it comes to that. Now, if the situation is serious, avoid any battles over house rules and concentrate entirely on the violation of God's rule. Now, kung it's more than house rules na yung pinag-uusapan at seryoso ang pag-uusapan na ito na, na, na itong batang ito ay talagang stubborn at rebelde, uh, let's stop talking about house rules. Let's talk about God's rules. How you have violated and rebelled against God and recover him or her through the gospel. Yan ang gusto natin, primarily. And then seek to establish godly pattern of discipline. Keep at it prayerfully and humbly. Gusto natin, kung nakarecover na kayo, nandito na sa point that you're just trying to recover lost grounds, do not lose heart and do not lose hope. Seek to establish and continue with the pattern ng godliness, of discipline, Pray and plead with God sa bagay na yan. Don't just give up and say, eh, it's too late. We don't know. We don't know. But you have a duty to magpatuloy sa bagay na yan. Okay? Now lastly, leaving and cleaving. Older, older kids, no? na they are leaving na the household. Uh, again, many things can be said. But here's one thing I want to read nandito. At isang uh, primary na pwede natin makonsider. The Bible requires children to honor their parents throughout life. When they are little, this honor, this honor takes the form of obedience. But this obligation to obedience ceases when a new household is formed. If a boy were to obey his parents all the way through life, there's no way he could really leave them and cleave to his wife and establish a new household. When a man cleaves to his wife, she also leaves her family and the authority over her is transferred from her father to her husband. Okay? So, and we have mga families din dito na nangyari yan at uh, the fathers relinquish their authority ng kanilang anak na babae to the husband-to-be. Okay? So when they leave the household, the problem exists when women in submission to their husband seek to remain in submission to their fathers. 
If a man and a woman do not leave their parents in order to start a new family unit, considerable difficulties will arise with regard to authority. The parent-slash-child relationship does not have the same permanent status as does the husband-wife relationship. Of course, parents must always be honored, and the parents should always love their children. But again, there are uh, providential cases no, na nangyayari uh, na hindi sa ideal. And these are exceptional cases na mangyayari sa isang family, pero hindi yung nagiging norm. Especially sa ating Pilipino, na we want you know, close family ties sa mga pamilya natin. But the case is, our children will eventually leave us and cleave. They will leave the nest. Are we preparing them even sa ngayon pa lang? You know, even the small children in their teenage years, are we equipping them enough, enough sa life na yun? Are we telling them that you know, they should detest it? And lastly, here's a quote from, again, Robert Dabney. Seeing that parental relation is what the scripture describes it, and seeing Satan has perverted it since the fall for the diffusion and multiplication of depravity and eternal death, the education of children for God is the most important business done on earth. It is the one business for which the earth exists. To all politics, all war, all literature, all money-making ought to be subordinated. And every parent, especially, ought to feel every hour of the day that next to making his own calling and election sure, personal piety, this is the end for which he is kept alive by God. This is the task. This is his task on earth. As parents, napakabigat na responsibility. Aside from our personal piety and holiness, striving to walk after God and in Christ, kung tayo'y binigyan, pinagkalooban, biniyaan ng Diyos ng mga anak, hindi po maliit na gawain ito. Kaya nga, isang uh, homemaker, a wife that chooses to quit her work para bantayan ng kanilang anak na mapalaki ng tama, ay hindi natin pwedeng maliitin kailanman. And even the father that chooses discipline para sa kanilang anak, kahit nasabihan siya ng mga kasama niya na, it's not a manly thing to do. So I hope this gives encouragement uh, sa atin. Bagaman hindi ito extensive, but I hope that this would help us sa ating magi, uh, mga magulang na hindi dito. Okay? Sakto namatay talaga yung tablet ko. Nawala talaga ng baterya. Uh, yun lang po. Any, any questions po or clarification na ano? Yeah, yun yung mga, isa sa mga scenarios na sabi ko kanina, no? out of necessity. Yung necessity na kung saan. Like for example, mayroon mga OFW na ganyan uh, na kailangan maghanap buhay. Sadly, it's, you know, nanay. Yung mga nanay yung umaalis. And uh, uh, it should be, as the scripture says, the father has to have that full responsibility is to provide for his family. Again, may mga scenarios na uh, we do not have the full knowledge of na hindi tayo magiging quick to judge and all that. Uh, but uh, this is a fallen world. But ideally, dapat, as Christians especially, uh, we want households that are intact, household that is God-centered, Christ-centered, na kung saan pinapangunahan ito ng lalaking may takot sa Diyos, pag-ibig sa Diyos at sa kanyang pamilya, na pangunahin ng kanyang pamilya. And in fact, nagpapasalamat ako na sa church na ito, no? even sa aming mga pastors, that we have that liberty uh, and that knowledge that when it comes to family, we, we have to attend to our families first. Pag may mga problema sa pamilya, we have to attend to our families first. Um, I grew up in a situation na kung saan sa church, the ministry is always first. Forget about family. And uh, unimaginable, really. But that's contrary sa salita ng Diyos. Okay? Si Pastor Oli may tanong. Ang sasagutin niya rin eh.
ultimately. Yeah. Exactly, that's one way na pwede nyo sabihin sa inyong anak. But the reality, thank you pa sir sa tanong na yun, para may clarify din. Ang reality is, lahat ng rules na sasabihin natin sa ating mga anak, uh, knowing na hindi ito, wala itong uh, malis o hindi ito makasalanan o mali, I mean, it's it's right and true and considerate, considering all men and all things, it's right, morally right then. Then, ultimately, gaya ng sabi ko na yung qualification doon, ultimately, whatever the, the the parents would say is to be considered as something to be obeyed by the child because they should see it as God's rule. Tama yung sabi ni Pastor Rolly. But overall, as parents, not necessarily uh, kailangan yung tanong ni Pastor Rolly is that may intindihan ba ito ng bata na maliit na mayroong dichotomy na uh, ito, house rule ba ito o God's rule? Uh, That's where we have as parents, I believe, and upon reading yung book din ito, na maging careful tayo na may explain natin sa mga Kasi eventually, yung point niya is, dun sa book was that, eventually magtatanong siya, bakit sila, itong ganitong uh, bata din sa church, uh, pwede nilang gawin ito. Pwede manood sila ng ganyan. Hindi natin pwedeng sabihin explicitly that they're disobeying uh, God. Kumbaga, They're watching TV late at night. Tayo hindi pwede. Eh bakit yung rule nyo ganyan? Kailangan namin kayong sundin. So in, in that sense, kailangan I think yung explanation natin maging mainam. No, na this is our rule and we as your parents are the given authority para sa'yo at this very moment na kami dapat sundin mo. And we are the given authority ng Diyos to determine what's good and right and what is helpful para sa'yo, mas makakabuti sa'yo. And you don't go to the other house to tell you hindi sila yung authority, hindi sila yung mananagot eh, sa Diyos eh, kung ano yung gagawin nila sa kanilang mga anak, kung ito'y patutungo sa kanilang kapahamakan. So I think magiging careful lang, ayaw natin maging uh, clear-cut na distinction din na gaya nung sinabi ni Pastor Rolly na parang confusing. But we want to tell, kasi eventually lalabas yung tanong na yun eh, paano po kung ganyan? I mean, you can answer din. Paano kung tatanungin sa inyo ng mga anak ninyo, bakit sila pwedeng gawin ganyan? Eh, sasabihin natin, that's their house rule. Ito yung house rule natin. Ito hanggang ganitong oras ka lang, hindi ka pwede sa ganito. Eh, minsan may magtatanong pa dahil matalino yung bata, nasan sa scriptures yan? Nasan sa Bible yan? By what standard, daddy, mommy, are you telling me that? Is that your standard or God's standard? That's why sabi ko rin kanina, dapat maging marunong din tayo at maalam tayo sa salita ng Diyos That yung mga binibigay nating rules, ultimately, meron yung moral uh, qualifications. Ultimately, meron ta For example, sasabihin natin sa anak natin, uh, dapat sa ganito, mag-behave ka lang. Eh, bakit sila hindi nag-behave? Hindi mo pwedeng sabihin na, eh, rule nila yon. Eh, basta sa amin, rule namin ito. Hindi. No? You have to be, you are to be able to explain to them na hahantong pa rin na may kinalaman pa rin to sa kalooban ng Diyos. In a sense, tama si Pastor Rolly. Kaya sabi mo, kung ano yung sabihin ng magulang mo, knowing that it is good and right, hindi makakasama para sa'yo, then that's, in a sense, God's rule. You want to distinguish lang na marunong tayo mag-explain sa ating maanak. Ayaw natin maging tamad. Nasabi natin, ah basta, sinabi ko yan. Ako ang tatay mo, hindi sila. Dairo apelido mo, hindi kung ano man. Okay? Tapos, ang usapan, manahimik ka dyan. And we think we, we won. Kasi tumahimik sila. But in their mind, it's lingering always. Diba? So, we, nasa atin yung response to them, by the way, hindi sa kanila. We are to make it clear sa kanila bakit may mga ganitong distinction. Bakit sa kanya, bakit, pwede sampung hikaw sa tenga niya, ba't ako hindi pwede? Ang tanong, Daddy, meron bang sinabi sa Bible na masama sampung hikaw? Diba kung sabihin mong meron, saan, Daddy? Daddy? Hindi mo alam, nanunod kay Soriano pala yun. Hindi Pastor Clyde Soriano, kay Eli Soriano. Pilosopo. Wala ka mapakita. Sabihin, eh, mali ka, daddy. Eh? Anong gagamitin mong principle? Kasi yung itsura mo, para kang adik eh. Anong kinalaman nun? Di ba? Ayon natin yung uh, tamad na mga answers. Gunaw natin maging mainam tayo sa ating mga sagot na responsible din yung ating mga kasagutan. Ang hirap ng tanong ni Pastor Oli. Gusto ko nang bumabari ito. 
Hindi serious. So, meron pa po ba? Pastor, baka may madagdag kayo? Doon sa tanong mo. <laughs> o, biglang ganun na. <laughs> Yan lang, no? Uh, yan. Sige po. Teenager. Babalikan ka. No? Mm. Oh, nakita niyo kanina, no? Children are a blessing. Indeed, because we they are means of grace para sa atin. O nga naman. That should cause us to be humble as well. Lalo na kung sinuri natin sa rin O nga, no? One, it should cause us to be humble. And it should also serve as a challenge sa atin na hindi natin i-defend lang yung sarili natin na Uh, hindi anak eh, kasi pag matanda ka na pwede na yan. Parang mahirap yata yun, no? inconsistent yun. No? Paano pag sinabi na may sinisita kang mali sa kanila at ibabalik nila sa'yo, eh, ikaw rin dati ginagawa mo yun. Eh. Like, example tulad ng... <laughs> Tama. Oo. Oh. Oo. Oh. Oh tama. Hindi dapat nilang gawing excuse yun. Amin natin na mali tayo doon at tingin tayo ng kapatawan sa kanila. Pero isang maganda rin doon, kung ginawa natin yun noon, dapat doon pala humingi na tayo ng kapatawaran para hindi nila pwede isumbat sa atin. No? At kung may sumbat man nila sa atin, sabi natin, o oh, nga anak, tama ka. Kaya nga humingi ang tawad sa'yo noon, di ba? Kasi mali yun. So yun. Pero balik tayo sa Ebra. Ano yung sabi? Say, for example, maring malinaw lang. Ano yung binabato sa'yo pabalik, for example? Example lang naman, kung wari. Ah. Makalat. Oo. Hmm. No, pag makalat. Hmm. Tama. For example, yun, no? Sisitayin ka na sinisita natin na ay, makalat yung kwarto mo, maglinis kayo. So, babalikan tayo na ikaw rin, yung kwarto mo, linis. Eh. Isang lesson, sarado mo palagi yung kwarto mo. <laughs> uh, totoo, totoo yun. Oh, oh, uh, pwede mangyari yun. So, magandang rebuke yun para sa atin. And, uh, we should also admit, be humble, and change our ways then hindi porket anak sila, eh, wala nang kwadrat dito yung makuha sa kanila. They, they observe. Oo, oh, dapat. Kung mali talaga yun, ha? Pero ang idea doon, dapat noon pala. <laughs> Mahirap yung kaya natin. Para sa'yo, nak, madumi yan, pero para sa akin, malinis yan. <laughs> ganyan na, nakakapag, mas nakakapagtrabaho ako ng maayos, nak, pag ganyan, eh, kaya wag mo anuhin, eh. Wala. Eh, di ba? Magiging subjective tayo minsan. Pag sinatin kalat. Ito, ito, ano mo, makalat talaga. Pero, dali mo si Sister Jenny. Sabi mo, oh, mami, makalat ba ito? Bato ganyan. Oo, oh, oo oh, oh, daw. <laughs> sige. Sige, sige. Meron pa po, wala na. Ay, si Brother Rino. Malapit na raw siya magkaapo. Oh, magandang tanong yan. No? Sino may mga lola rito? May mga obligasyon pa ba ang mga grandparents sa mga apo? Tanungin natin ng uh, pastor na merong apo. Pastor Wally. <laughs> okay. Maiksi lang po. No? Again, narinig po natin, ang apo ay anak ng anak ninyo. No? So ang responsibility, primary na sa kanila hindi na ba pwede magbigay ng instruction ang lolo at lola? Baka yan yung magiging tanong. No? Uh, ano masasabi nyo, lola, Linda? Sige, kayo muna. Pwede po. Uh, may... Uh, 
Ano yung, yung tanong po kasi is, meron pa bang obligation? Ah, payo. Oo. Ang magdidisiplina po, obligasyon po, parents. No? Uh, kaya nga minsan nagkakakonflict, huwag ano, kung wari, uh, kahit bakasyon, parang may hirapan ka na ko, pupunta tayo doon kay nanay at tatay. Ayaw nila nang pinapalo yung anak natin. Ayaw nila pinapalo yung apo, na, apo nila. Uh, parang mahirap. No? So, yun, may struggle minsan. Pero, ultimately, responsibility na magulang. Hindi mananagot yung lolo at lola sa pagpapalaki ng anak. Ha? Oo, kasi yun yung tendency na suspoil. No? Pero, hindi naman lahat siguro. Pero, makita natin biblical example. Uh, Lois and Eunice. No? Si Timothy... Binanggit ni Paul yun, especially. Lola, Lola at yung nanay. Lola, kasama. Kasama dun sa nurturing ni Timothy na kung saan ang nurturing is what? Salita ng Diyos that led to his salvation. Instrumental yung Lola. And in that sense, yan ang pinakamalaki at pinakamagadang uh, contribution kung meron na tayong ibigay sa mga apo natin. At kung meron mang... Uh, ginagawa na pag uh, na discipline yung mga anak natin sa kanilang mga anak ay uh, kung pwede po din ay uh, hindi tayo manghimasok doon not unless it's you know morally uh, wrong talaga like uh, abuse and all that may moral obligation tayo pero kung ginagawa naman lang tama ay hindi natin iko-contradict like for example humingi yung apo natin ninyo magiging apo nyo lolo pahingi po ako ng ganyan oy sige Baka gusto niyo munang tanong hindi mo na may sinasabi ba si mami niyo tsaka si daddy niyo tungkol dito. Na pag tinanong ko sila ay hindi ka malalagay sa alanganin. Ah, sige wag na lang po. Alam mo na kaagad, no? Pero in that sense, hindi ka tumatayo na konsentidor or parang go-to guy ng mga apo. But in fact, ni respeto may authority ng anak mo dun sa kanila na binigay ng Diyos, actually. So, in a way, ganun. pero pwede tumulong, no? Pero, hindi yung magiging under the table ka na, na ganyan. But then, you, you go through yung, yung parents pa rin, yung maganda. Pastor Rolly, may gusto yung dagdag. Okay na? Okay na ulit. Okay. Sige po po. Totoo yan. So isa sa mga maraming kamalian ni David, no? Even if he's, he was named as a man after a God's own heart. Eh, pero yung pamilya niya, no? Na sa area na yan. Kay, kay Eli, ganun din. Malalayang kay Eli. In fact, ang sabi nga kay Eli, pinagsabihan naman ni Eli, pero yung dating ng Diyos sa kanya, hindi, hindi sapat yung pagsabi mo. Baka mamaya, napaka-light lang ng ano mo. Walang pangil, kumbaga, yung pag-discipline mo sa kanila. Kaya yan, patay. Diba? So, yeah, mga kamalian ni David na pwede natin ano, pag pinabayaan talaga. Ano ba po? Wala na. Yes, salamat. Okay, uh, but then we would encourage naman din kung nahiha kayo magtanong, tanongin nyo lang din sa amin or sa akin para ma, mas ma-explain kung meron mang hindi malinaw dito sa nasabi ko. Okay? So I think kung wala na, uh, meron pa ba tayong time? Oh, wala na, medyo late na rin, no? Uh, maraming salamat po sa pag-attend ninyo and uh, I hope and I pray na magamit ito ng Diyos para sa atin, especially may mga upcoming parents tayo, first timers, mga bagong parents, lumang parents, at uh, lumang-lumang parents. Uh, magpatuloy po tayo sa biyaya ng Diyos. At uh, nawa, yung salita ng Diyos, gaya na sabi natin kanina, is sufficient for these things. Okay? So we have to dig deeper and be Christ-like and be godly sa ating pagpapalaki na ating mga anak. Okay, so let's pray. Let's pray. Panginoon Diyos, nagpapasalamat kami sa gawing ito. Uh, naway pagpalain niyo po ang mga salita na ito, mga encouragement, corrections, rebuke, even para sa amin, O oh Lord, na ito'y maging gabay para sa pagpapalaki ng mga anak, uh, maging sa mga magulang na uh, nandito, o magulang na kanilang mga anak ay malalaki na, o even yung mga may sarili ng pamilya, Eh Lord, sana maging gabay din ito para sa kanila sa oras na ito. Eh pagpalain niyo wa, nawa ang aming din pag-iwahiwalay sa oras na ito. Sa ngalan ni Jesus. Amen.
Uh, before tayo mag-picture taking, 